Assalamu alaikum doctors. Today our topic of discussion is all around the proton pump inhibitors, which is also known as PPIs. So basically in this lecture we will be like more emphasizing on the drugs that is involved in the category of PPI and their pharmacokinetics, their mechanism of action, their uses and their side effects. So being a medical student you have a sound knowledge of PPI which is very important and basic concept of the pharmacology. So without any wasting of time let's talk about the proton pump inhibitors which is also called PPI. So basically what, what is PPI? PPI are the drugs that inhibit the gastric acid secretion of the stomach. What are PPI? PPI are the drugs that inhibit the gastric acid secretion of the stomach. So actually, what are the drugs that is involved in the PPI category? Now, how you can easily pin down the PPI drugs for that we are having a mnemonic that is, that is, all per. How you can easily recall the PPI drugs? So for that, we are having a very easy trick that is all per, where every single alphabet will correspond to the one of the drug of the PPI. Now, if I talk about O, O stands for omeprazole. O stands for the omeprazole. L stands for lensoprazole. P stands for pentoprazole and E stands for isomeprazole where R stands for the rabiprazole. So what is the trick to recall the PPI drugs? For that we have a mnemonic that is all per. We are O stands for omeprazole. L stands for lensoprazole, P stands for pentaprazole, E stands for isomeprazole, R stands for the rabiprazole. What are their main action? It inhibits the gastric acid secretion of the stomach. Now, if I talk about the pharmacokinetics of PPI, so basically PPI it is given orally and what is the main point regarding with PPI? Let's suppose if we are having this is a PPI drug. Just assume that this is a PPI drugs. So on the PPI drugs, we are having a very specialized type of coating. On the PPI drug, we have very specialized type of coating that is called enteric acid resistive. That is enteric acid resistive coat. So what is the coat on the PPI drugs? That is enteric acid resistive coat. Now actually what is the main action of this enteric acid uh, resistive coat? Basically due to this specialized type of coating on the PPI, basically it, it escapes from the gastric content of the stomach and then it leads to the duodenum. Just let's suppose if this is a stomach sorry for the rough diagram like if I take like there is a particular person they take the PPI drugs let's suppose this is a PPI drugs so when it take these drugs so it will go to the esophagus eventually it will come into the stomach now when it comes into the stomach there are specialized type of coating on the PPI that is enteric acid resistor coat due to this sort of coating specialized sort of coating it will escape from the gastric acid content that is the gastric acid content from the stomach and from the stomach it will come to the duodenum it will come into the duodenum so when it comes into the duodenum over here it get absorbed once it get absorbed it will again go to the parietal cell and over there it get act on the uh, hydrogen potassium ATPase pump and ultimately it will inhibit that and it will decrease the gastric acid secretion we will be talking about the mechanism of action in a while but let's suppose uh, uh, but till now you can easily you can you have a sound knowledge of this that this PPI we will take this PPI orally and these PPI are 
consists of a specialized site, a specialized sort of coating. That coating is called enteric acid resistive coating. What are the main purpose and what are the main uh, uh, advantage of this enteric acid resistive coat? That this PPI, due to this coating, it will it will escape from the gastric acid content from the stomach and eventually it comes into the duodenum. Once it comes into the duodenum, it get absorbed here and then it go into the parietal cell. As you know that parietal cell is located in the stomach and over there it act on the hydrogen potassium pump and it inhibit the gastric acid secretion. Now this is all about the pharmacokinetics of the PPI. Hopefully you are getting my points. Now let's talk about the mechanism of action of the PPI and it is one of the most basic topic and being a medical student you have a sound knowledge of the mechanism of action of the ppi that actually uh, how this uh, ppi work in the uh, human stomach so before i really uh, proceed toward the action of ppi i must say how this acid how acid let's suppose how acid is generated and the stomach so how acid is generated on the stomach you you need to uh, you need to clear your concept regarding with the ppi that actually how it does work so be, but before that you have a sound knowledge of this that how this protons basically it is generated in the stomach now let's talk about the mechanism of action of the ppi just assume that this is a parietal cell just assume that this is a parietal cell as you know that the parietal cell is the specialized cell of the stomach now just assume that this is the lumen of the stomach this is a lumen of the stomach this is a parietal cell and this is the inner surface so hopefully you are getting my point i'll repeat it once again this is parietal cell and this is the lumen of the stomach and this is the inner surface so on this inner surface on this inner surface, we are having a specialized type of receptor that is present in the parietal cell and the parietal cell membrane. Now, these specialized type of receptor that is so called as yes, please, that is H2 receptor. That is H2 receptor. Now, we are we are having an, another sort of receptor that is also present in the parietal cell the specialized sort of receptor is gastrin receptor meaning they are more specific for the gastrin and at the last we are having an another receptor as well that is let's suppose we are having an another receptor for it these receptor is called yes please that is acetylcholine receptor so till now i i told you that on the parietal surface we are having a three important set of receptors that is h2 receptors that is histamine receptors but more specifically this is a h2 receptors and this is a gastrin receptors this is acetylcholine receptor meaning that this h2 receptor is more specific for the histamine this gastrin receptor is more specific for the gastrin and this acetylcholine receptor is more specific for the acetylcholine meaning that this h2 receptor is not stimulated by gastrin or acetylcholine but it can be stimulated by histamine but if i talk about the gastrin receptor meaning that this gastrin receptor is more specific for the gastrin Hopefully you are getting my point that this gastrin receptor is more stem is more specific for the gastrin, but it do not stimulate it by acetylcholine and by the yes please histamine. So now just let's assume that we we are having a some special molecule or neurotransmitter that is that is histamine. Now just let's suppose this is a histamine. Let's suppose this is a histamine. This histamine it can it will come and it will bind to the H2 receptor. It will bind to the H2 receptor. So once it binds to the H2 receptor, what happens? That it will activate the adenyl cyclase. It will activate the adenyl cyclase. Now what happens once adenyl cyclase get activated? It convert the ATP and to CAMP so what happens once adenyl cyclase get activated 
it convert the ATP into a CAMP. Now just now if we talk about the gastrin receptor this gastrin receptor is being stimulated by gastrin now let's suppose this is a gastrin soon as when this gastrin it comes and it get bind to the gastrin receptor so what happen it will stimulate the calcium it will stimulate the calcium and calcium is the second messenger from the for the intracellular cell now if this is a uh, acetylcholine receptor it is being it is being stimulated by the acetylcholine once this acetylcholine can get bind to this acetylcholine receptor it will also stimulate the calcium now in the intracellular compartment we get a specialized sort of products and the form of CAMP and the calcium and calcium now what happens when this CAMP this CAMP and this calcium and this calcium it will bind and it will form a new specialized type of molecule these CAMP calcium it get bind and it will form a very special and unique sort of molecule and that molecule is called yes please that is protein kinases now what happens when this protein kinases get activated it will make the hydrogen potassium ATPase pump on this side uh, just near to the lumen of the stomach like it will form the it will form the that is hydrogen that is hydrogen potassium ATPase pump so what happens that this specialized type of molecule that is so called as protein kinases this protein kinases will make the hydrogen potassium ATPase pump and what is the main action of this hydrogen potassium ATPase pump it will it will it will push hydrogen into the lumen of the stomach and it will it will move it will move this potassium into the intracellular compartment so what happens this protein kinases it will make the hydrogen potassium ATPase pump it get activated this hydrogen potassium ATPase pump and once it get activated it will come the hydrogen molecule will come into the lumen of the stomach and this way the hydrogen get generated in the body and there will be increased acidity in the stomach and there will be decreased pH of the stomach so students this is the general mechanism that actually how acid is being how acid mean, meaning protons so how proton is generated in the stomach hopefully you are getting my point for uh, but i'll repeat it once again so that you can easily remember it so students till now i uh, told you that this is pyritis uh, this is the lumen of the stomach and this is the inner surface and the inner surface we are having a three specialized sort of receptors the one set of receptor is known as that is H2 receptors meaning they are more specific for histamine and this is called gastrin receptor this is called acetylcholine receptor once the uh, histamine comes and it get bound with the histamine H2 receptors it will activate the adenyl cyclase once it get activated it will convert the ATP into cyclic AMP now if this gastrin receptor is being uh, stimulated by gastrin it will activate the calcium and once the acetylcholine bind to the acetylcholine receptor it will again stimulate the calcium now in the form of products we get CAMP calcium it will combine together it will form a specialized stuff it will form a, spe a specialized sort of molecule that is so called as the protein kinases these protein kinases will make the hydrogen potassium ATPase pump uh, what is the main action of the hydrogen potassium ATPase pump it will it will generate the protons and the lumen of the stomach and it will push the potassium into the intracellular compartment and this way the acid is being generated and the stomach so students hopefully you are getting my points now now if we talk about the ppi action that is proton pump inhibitors what actually ppi do that this uh, this ppi let's suppose this is a ppi drugs now if we take on this orally what happened that this ppi it inhibit the this pump it will inhibit the hydrogen potassium ATPase pump actually what happens when this PPI it inhibit 
when it inhibits the hydrogen potassium ATPase pump, meaning they are not working physiologically. So what happens? The hydrogen is not being generated in the lumen of the stomach, or we can say there will be decreased acid generation in the body. So in this way, PPI can uh, inhibit the gastric secretion in the stomach. It, it do not act on this specialized site of receptor, even though when we uh, given uh, PPI to the patients. So in that condition, in that condition also these special these special specialized sort of receptor they do acting their uh, main uh, work but over here we, uh, the main thing that is being inhibited that is the hydrogen potassium ATPase pump they are not uh, working by the PPI when PPI is given to the patient it will inhibit the hydrogen potassium ATPase pump as it get inhibited by the PPI so there will be no proton uh, there will be no acid generation in the body so uh, uh, ultimately we can say that proton pump inhibitor it is more useful to inhibit the gastric acid in the body. Hopefully, students, you are getting my points. Now, if we talk about the uses of the PPI, so what is the main uses of the PPI? This is very important. As we told, as I told you, that basically PPI it inhibits the gastric acid secretion in the body, in the stomach. So, if it is if it inhibit the gastric acid secretion in the body, it means we can give in any condition, this PPI can give in any condition if a patient is suffering from any sort of disease, like if a patient is suffering from hyperacidity. So any disorder, if a patient is suffering from the hyperacidity condition, we can give this PPI to end their patients. Now let's suppose it is uh, more preferably, it is being given in the zollinger ellison syndrome. Zollinger Ellison syndrome. It is one of the most important syndrome regarding uh, regarding the PPI. And this condition, the patient is being is being exhibited by the hyperacidity. So, in this condition, mostly PPI is being given. And also, it is given in the peptic ulcer. It is also given in the peptic ulcer and gastroesophageal reflex disease and erosio. Erosio iso figitis and instead induced ulcer. You can give PPI to any hyperacidity condition, like if you talk about Zollinger Ellison syndrome. It is also given in peptic ulcer. It is also given in gastroesophageal reflux disease. It is also given in erosoesophagitis. Any sort of infection that is occurring in esophagus and that condition, we also prefer the PPI. And also, it is being it is being given to the NSAID induced ulcer. So, student, this is the uh, important using regarding with the PPI, and you need to remember it. Now, if I talk about the side effects of the PPI, so student, there are very uh, less side effects. Of of the PPI uh, or we can say there are almost minimal side effects of the PPI but there are certain uh, side effects of the PPI that might be that might be headache that might be diarrhea like some sort of like abdominal pain can also exhibit it by patient and skin rashes and arthralgia so students there are very less side effects of the PPI but still there are certain side effects of the PPI uh, like if uh, there are not so much severe side effects of the PPI but there are certain side effects in the form of headache in the form of diarrhea or abdominal pain skin rashes and arthralgia so students, this is all about the PPI uh, drugs, their pharmacokinetics, their mechanism of action, their uses, and their side effects. This is very important and basic topic regarding uh, and the pharmacology and being a medical student, you have a sound knowledge of this. So students, uh, this is all about PPI. Hopefully you, you are getting my lecture. Uh, so if you like it, kindly share and support us. Thank you.